hey everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Ina today's video is going to be another pixie cut but this time around I decided to do a mohawk so I hope you guys enjoy this video it's a fun look a very exotic look for spring summer time so if you are interested in seeing how I receive this look please stay tuned so this time around I'm making my wig on my mannequin head before putting the stocking cap on the mannequin head, I did try on the stocking cap and I drew two lines right above my eyebrows and that's just to indicate where I'll be placing the shorter hair versus the longer hair. And of course you'll need a shower cap and the actual stocking cap just so that you don't get glue everywhere. So I'm going to continue on with that line. I'm using a white eyeliner pencil just so that I can see where the line is going. And I'm just going to draw it down to the neck area of the mannequin and it's going to be drawn into a V shape. Typically with mohawks, you want your the sides of your hair to be into a V shape as opposed to a square or a rectangle just so that it can, um, it can transition better as opposed to being blunt. All the information on the hair that I use will be in the description box below so you can definitely check that out. And I'm starting off with the longest piece in the 26 piece hair. Like I mentioned in my last video, I like to use the longer pieces on the bottom just so that it can give me room to style the hair. When you use shorter pieces, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to get length because it'll be already, it'll be short. And um, depending how long the nape of your neck is, you might want the hair to be a little longer than shorter. So I only use two tracks to lay in the back and then I'm going to proceed with the shorter pieces. And I'm using that line to guide me. So basically anything outside of the white line is where I'll be growing the shorter hair. It's pretty self-explanatory. It takes a lot of practice, but you're gluing the hair just makes it so much easier. You also use a blow dryer just to expedite the process because it wouldn't stick to the mannequin head. So you might want to have your blow dryer handy just so that it'll be faster. So as you're getting closer to the top, you should definitely see a V. And moving on to the sides, you want to make sure that you're using the longest piece for the sideburns. Remember, longest piece for the sideburns. I know that it may be a little hard to indicate where the sideburns are because you are using a mannequin, but I made sure that I gave myself enough room to put that long piece just in case it didn't fit on my head the proper way. So I just do the longer pieces on the side and then I proceeded with the shorter pieces. You can obviously see that that longer piece right on the side of the mannequin head and the, on the back is longer than anything because you want enough space to style your hair according to the shape of your head. Okay, now that I'm done doing the sides, I am moving on to my V shape. I am using the longest pieces, which is the 8 inch hair, 
separate from the 26 piece hair. So this is a regular straight eight inch hair. And I'm just simply measuring, cutting, and gluing the hair. Okay, so here I am reverse gluing the track. I'm laying the track in the opposite direction of the other tracks. And this is just to get a more voluminous mohawk. I love my mohawk to be bouncy and I want the hair to stand up in a proper manner. So this is actually a great way or great technique to use in order for you to get a more voluminous look. Okay, so once everything is glued into place in the middle section, now you wanna go on to actually styling the hair. And I'm using a razor comb just to remove all the excess hair that's, that I don't want, pretty much. And um, I'm making sure that I'm shaving it as low as possible. But I'm being mindful that around the edges, you wanna be careful when it comes to shaving down that part because remember, the hair is not on your head. So the mannequin head is not the same size as your head. So I'm making sure that I'm leaving as much as the sideburn and the back area as possible until I actually try to the wig on. Okay, for the middle section, I am using the same razor comb to layer it. I am just layering the hair into a V shape.
Okay, so once I was done with laying the other hair, it is time to curl. I was going for some effortless, messy, loose curls. So the curls do not have to be perfect, so I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up. So this is how the wig looks once it's all done. I did pin curl the top area so that the hair can lay away from my face. And I did do some further styling once I tried on the wig off camera. So after I took out the pins, I did not like how the hair sat in the front of my head. So I basically combed out the curls and pinned them a different way. Okay, so I did pull out some of my edges just so that the style could look a little more believable and not too wiggy. I'm using my Organic Root Stimulator Gel Edge Control to slick down my edges and I pretty much focused on the hair that was exposed. I didn't slick um, the other side, I just slicked down that side. And I'm also using the Pantene Pro V Volume Up Hair Spray in the Maximum Hold to hold these curls. I don't want the curls to drop. I just want them to stay to stand still where they're at. Don't want them going anywhere at all. 